Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Make a Fabulous First Impression with a Professional Portrait, with our special guest speaker, John Glover of John Glover Photography. My name is Katie McDonald. Uh, I am uh, the Agent Training and Communications Coordinator here at Equator. I'm a relatively new voice to many of you, but I've been working behind the scenes with Mia and George on every webinar that you've heard for the past six months, and I'm excited to be your host today. Uh, our presenter today is John Glover, owner and principal photographer of John Glover Photography, and he's looking forward to sharing information with you today also. Uh, with me behind the scenes are Mia and Nick Brito from our agent development team. You may recall their names from the emails that you receive from them regularly. And uh, they will be working today to help answer your questions that come into the question box. We'll talk about the question box in a second, but first let me tell you more about John. Our guest presenter has owned and run John Glover Photography, an affiliated signature headshot studio in Costa Mesa, California, serving Orange County since 2015. John specializes in corporate and professional headshots and has recently added real estate photography to his studio services in the Orange County and South LA County area. Uh, he knows the particular needs of the real estate professionals in terms of presenting every aspect of the business in the best possible light. And before uh, embarking on his photography career, John spent over 20 years working in the corporate world as a technology professional, which has uh, supplied him with a breadth of real-world private sector experience and perspective that many other photographers in the industry are lacking. Uh, in addition, John is a certified associate photographer with Peter Hurley's HeadshotCrew.com. Uh, if you haven't heard of that before, uh, Peter Hurley's HeadshotCrew.com is an elite international consortium of decorated and industry-recognized photographers. For those attendees joining us from areas outside Orange County, uh, at the end of this webinar, John is going to be able to provide a little bit more information about finding a Peter Hurley associate photographer in your area. So getting back to the questions, before we get started, I want to let you know that all attendees' lines are muted. So everyone is currently in listen-only mode. However, we encourage you to ask questions by typing in your questions in the question box that you see uh, on your screen. And then during the last 10 minutes or so, John and I will address any common interest questions that we see so that everyone on the webinar is able to benefit from the answer. If we run out of time to address your question, we'll answer directly via email by the end of the week. We will also be emailing a link to the video presentation to all attendees. Also, for any account-specific equator questions that arise during our webinar, please reach out to our agent development team at the number that you see on your screen. We'll pop this up a couple more times as well. And with that, I am happy to turn the floor over to John to get us into it. Thank you, Katie. It's really great to be here. I'm excited to share what I can with all of you about uh, headshot photography and a little bit about personal branding. I will be covering with you uh, today why your online photo contributes so substantially to your first impression and why that matters, what to look for in a professional photographer to end up with the best photos possible, basics for prepping for the photo shoot, and uh, helpful tips for uploading your photo, and some resources for you to find an excellent professional photographer in your area that can help you get the perfect headshot. Then I'll turn it back over to Katie to talk briefly about some additional tools at your disposal within Equator to help you make that positive first and potentially second and third impression. So let's get started. A recent media study conducted by LinkedIn found that having a profile picture loaded on a social media or networking site makes your profile 14 times more likely to be viewed. A separate in-house media study conducted by another social media platform concluded that on social media sites on which you are introducing yourself to new connections, the text of your profile can count for less than 10% of what people think of you. A 2012 eMarketer report suggested as part of its findings that marketing an image of yourself that is more than four years old sees a me measurable deterioration in credibility when you meet face-to-face -face with potential clients. If you're not keeping current and being honest about who you are in your marketing materials, it sends a message to potential associates that you might not be up to date or totally trust trustworthy about your business practices. 
Industry recommendation is to update your marketing photo every two to four years. As a real estate agent, you undoubtedly already invest in a wide array of online and tangible marketing tools. A good headshot is a minimal investment that you are able to use with and within all of those other marketing tools to keep a consistent personal brand. A comprehensive analysis of thousands of participants reactions and impressions of sample facial photos found that the general public instantly and subconsciously associates certain facial features and expressions with specific personality traits. Some examples, a neutral or negative expression in a photograph is not seen as pensive or thoughtful or serious. It seems to only transmit disagreeableness. Showing teeth in your smile heightens your likability factor. However, less is more because too broad of a smile or a mid-laugh smile begins to diminish observers' perce perception of your overall competence. To emphasize that projection of competence, practice an eye squinch for the camera. It's halfway to a squint, but without involving the brows if possible or upper lids much if possible. This move is proven to make you look less intimidated in front of the camera. Exhibiting a defined jawline shows likability, competence, and influence to viewers. If you don't naturally have a strong jawline, don't worry. Just make sure you select a photographer that knows how to pose you to bring out the jawline. A headshot photographer's job is literally to direct you to convey confidence and approachability in your headshot. While we're talking about the role of first impressions in social media, let's take an example from Katie's before and after LinkedIn profile pictures and see what each conveys about her as a potential business partner. Here's a picture Katie chose from our headshot session. What does this photo tell the observer about her as a potential associate? That's an example from a LinkedIn profile. To bring this difference closer to home, let's look at what servicers see when they're looking for you in the Equator platform. Let's use example agent as our focus for this page. In this view, what impression does this profile give the asset manager that is searching for an agent to handle a new property? It kind of gets lost amidst the others. It looks like a potentially fake profile because it has no photo. In this next view, the example agent has a photo, but it's a photo that she asked her friend to take in a hallway. How does this profile look next to the other agents in the search results list? It's probably better than no photo, and it does stand out a little bit, but it's taken from too far back, and it's less personable and polished because of this. Scenario three shows us an example agent that has chosen a professional portrait to include next to her capability statement. How does this stack up in the list? If and when you decide to invest, or in some cases reinvest in your headshots, it's important to know what to look for and what to watch out for in a photographer. When shopping around for a photographer, look for these indicators that they know what they're doing. Do they show you a fairly extensive and varied portfolio? If the photographer has no previous examples to show you, or if they have very few, this might indicate limited, limited experience which could prevent you from getting the right result from the photo shoot. A headshot portfolio should be consistent and even, and you should be able to rely on your photographer to produce a similar result for you as those you see in their portfolio. Does the photographer provide guidance via conversation, email, or online as to how you might want to dress, do your hair, and otherwise prepare for the shoot? If you're not getting prep guidance, there's a strong chance you might not get guidance during the photo shoot, which is a very important part of the process to achieve good photos. You want a photographer that is knowledgeable and comfortable enough to direct you during picture taking to ensure that you'll like the results. When in doubt, ask the photographer what kind of direction and guidance you can expect during the session. A photographer that shoots tethered to their laptop during the shoot and is willing to share and discuss the results in real time may be a good choice, indicating that the photographer is skilled and confident in what they do. Here's some of the guidance I provide people ahead of our session. You should select clothing that you feel confident and comfortable wearing. Now is not the time to try out a brand new outfit that you've never worn. It might work great or it might cause you undue distraction and stress if something isn't right with the outfit once we're underway. A better selection would be something you've already worn once or twice and know exactly how you fit and feel in it. 
for colors and patterns, less is usually more. Solid colors are great. Medium and dark solid colors often work best. Busy clothing and patterns are distracting and should generally be avoided. Jewelry should be kept to simple, elegant pieces or skipped entirely. Commercial headshots are not meant to draw attention to items like jewelry. Earrings, if worn, I often prefer none, should not dangle from the ear at all. Studs of some type are best. Large, busy, or otherwise distracting necklaces should be avoided. So in Katie's photo here, we took this uh, to illustrate a few distractions that might show up in a headshot. Um, as you can see, the eyes are drawn immediately to the necklace and maybe not her or her face first, and that's bad in a headshot. The shirt isn't bad, it isn't too bad, but it's also uh, you know, a brighter color that can be a little distracting. It has some wrinkles. So these are just examples of things that may not work as well in a headshot as other selections. Hair should be neat and styled in a way that, that you are used to wearing it. Make sure you feel prepared to be yourself during the shoot. Ultimately, it's the headshot photographer's job to make you look your best, and no one else is to blame for lesser results. And here we see the photo that Katie chose from our session that we did together. And um, even though these were both taken in my studio, I, I prefer this photo she chose as well <laughs> over the, the green shirt. Um, and here she's looking to me pretty rela relaxed, confident, and approachable. And her clothing selection is better because it's less distracting. Once your photographer has furnished you with the perfect photo, be sure to upload it correctly. When uploading your new picture to digital platforms, make sure to pay attention to each site's guidelines for file size. If you upload a really low resolution, small image to a website that shows your image a bit larger or displays your image a bit larger, it will look fuzzy or pixelated. On the other hand, if you upload a huge file, you will often get an error message back from the site, or in some cases, only a corner of your photo will show in the image window. When you're viewing your final image in a default program like Windows Photo Viewer or Microsoft Paint, the program will often tell you the dimensions of the picture in pixels. This can be a clue to how your photo will eventually look uploaded to a site. As a rule, your photo should be at least 500 pixels by 500 pixels. For equator, a square image or a 1-1 one, one crop, as it's called, is best. Avoid a landscape-oriented portrait to avoid looking smushed in the portrait window. The image should be no larger than five megabytes, and typically it will be smaller. Common JPEG compression allows for a much smaller file size at 500 or a bit larger resolution. Also, equator photos must be in JPEG format as opposed to BMP or PNG. Spaces and or special characters in the photo file name may cause problems with uploading as well. Ideally, your photographer should crop your photos so that your face makes up just a little more than half of the total picture space. Too much more in your extreme close-up can look a bit intimidating, too far away, and it becomes more difficult to make out the features that show potential clients who you really are. Generally speaking, your photographer should be providing you with a well-cropped, web-sized image that can be easily used for most digital or online uses and other file types and sizes upon request. Some photographers charge additional fees for high-resolution resolution images. High-resolution images are often not needed for website, email, or small print uses. If you're looking for a professional photographer in your area to use to refresh your online image, I would recommend looking at headshotcrew.com. You can perform a search there by zip code or city, and you will get a list of qualified and skilled headshot photographers in your area. A couple things to note, the associate photographers of Peter Hurley's, like myself, will appear first in the list, and if there are none or you choose to look to other photographers in the same area, they will appear below the associate photographers in the list. This is a great resource, though, to find a, a, a quali quality headshot photographer in your area, and I'd highly recommend looking into it. Also, for those realtors in the Orange County area looking to partner with a professional real estate photographer, uh, I offer photography services for real estate as well. This would be somewhat localized. It's Orange County and some parts of L.A., but you can find more information at realestate.johnglover.photography. 
And for even more resources you can use to improve your visibility in the real estate game, here's Katie to tell you about some of the tools Equator offers. Thanks, John. This has been some uh, excellent information about how to up your visibility online in lots of different venues in the best possible way. Uh, focusing it back on Equator uh, for a second, at Equator we have other ways to boost your visibility uh, both within and outside of our platform. And two of those that uh, we're going to talk about today include uh, premium placement. Uh, many of you have heard us talk about premium placement. This is another important tool for ensuring that your profile appears the way you want it to, specific to asset manager searches uh, when they're looking to uh, find an agent to list a property. Equator's premium placement product allows you to purchase top tier placement in agent searches for REOs in your preferred zip code, so the zip codes in which you work. And this, of course, greatly increases your visibility in asset manager search results and gives you more impressions, which really translates to more opportunities for asset managers to be exposed to your profile in your own market area. Uh, updating your agent profile image and investing in premium placement kind of go hand in hand, uh, similar to what John was talking about earlier. A strong first impression headshot makes sure your image is premium placement ready if you invest in this tool. Uh, and then, of course, Agent Elite. So the Agent Elite product gives you access to many more tools that will help you gain an advantage in the Equator marketplace specifically, uh, including agent certification. Many of you know about this product already as well. For those of you that don't, uh, finishing agent certification training courses provides you with the Equator certified designation in, in our Equator system. And that shows asset managers that you're knowledgeable about how to use Equator and how to effectively market and sell REO and short sale properties if you take and pass those courses as well. Uh, REO Market Insights allow you to read current REO trends and metrics and see where the REO inventory is in your own market to help you strategize where you want to focus your advertising. And last but not least, REO Alerts. These alerts tell you when an REO property is added in the Equator system in your market area in real time. So it gives you real time insight into inventory and gives you a heads up over your competition. Also, a heads up, this is new information to everybody, watch this space uh, because coming soon Equator is expanding our inventory and audience to include non-bank owned traditional real estate. Uh, that's going to attract uh, buyer and investor leads. And this means that you can look forward to using the Equator platform to boost your visibility, not just with servicers like you're used to doing, but bulk purchase investors and traditional real estate home buyers as well. All right, at this time, I want to thank John Glover once again for lending your expertise to our webinar. And uh, just a couple things before we get to the questions. For those of you in the Orange County or South Los Angeles area that have been inspired by today's presentation uh, to invest in some contemporary headshots, John's studio is offering a 15% discount for any headshot session to clients that mention this webinar. So take advantage of that by contacting John at the, uh, the uh, email address or the uh, website seen on your screen. So now, let me open up the questions and see what we've got for John to, uh, to answer. We've, oh, we've got a lot of great questions. Uh, the first one is coming from Victor. Can I use my passport photo? Uh, does that count as a professional photo? Well, you certainly could, but uh, the reason I may not recommend that is, although they might even have some decent equipment and gear, um, you know, the, the biggest part of a headshot session is, again, the photographer's skill in directing you to look your best. And so you're really missing out on that portion of the photo session when you go down to the passport photo booth and, and get a quick snapshot. So, um, yes, you could. Not really something I'd necessarily recommend because we're missing all those components of the directing and coaching and posing you. Excellent. That's helpful. Um, we've got another one here. I'm not photogenic. How do I make myself look good for the photographer? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as they say, we're we're all our worst critic, and you know, I've heard that probably you know 250 times in the you know recent months, <laughs> maybe as I work as a headshot photographer. But the thing I would throw out there is again, mostly it's your photographer's job to make you look your best. 
and that can't be emphasized enough. Um, a photographer that just puts you out there and snaps a few photos and then you find out later that you don't like any of them, um, that, that's not a good photographer um, for headshots in particular. And so I would recommend, again, just screening the photographer by looking at portfolio and asking them questions about how the session will flow and if they provide direction to you. Because, um, you know, as, as uh, my mentor used to say, um, you know, as a headshot photographer, we're 10% photographer and 90% psychologist. And we used to chuckle at that, but uh, having done this a while, I think there's a lot of truth in that. <laughs> so the onus of being photogenic is not on the subject. It's really on the photographer. Yeah, right? and <laughs> I, I actually, um, what I do with that, since everyone says it, is I completely ignore it. If someone tells me they're not photogenic, it literally means nothing to me. Because my job is to get in there and help them become the best version of themselves, period. And so there are other things they might tell me that, catch my attention more, but I'm not photogenic is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's a really important one. Uh, what do you charge? What is the typical cost of a headshot? Sure. So one thing to keep in mind is the price, the pricing for headshots it will vary quite a bit by region in the U.S. And so um, since I'm in the L.A. area, my prices might be a little higher than, than where you're located potentially, but just keep that in mind. My session started $200 uh, retail for one look, as we call it, which is one outfit or backdrop. You get a nice set of proofs, and then you also get to choose one image for retouching. Um, so that gives you a point of reference. Uh, it could be less or more, depending on where you're located. I know, like, you know, New York City is probably more expensive, and rural areas across the country might be a little less. So just to give you a, a, bit, of a, a bit of guidance there. That's a good frame of reference, not only for the price point, but what you should expect to get for the uh, yeah. as a takeaway. And the other thing I'd put out there just real quickly is, um, you know, even in this area, there are a lot cheaper headshot photographers. I know that for a fact. Um, and that's okay. Uh, just, just keep in mind, again, that not everyone's a good headshot photographer, even if they're a professional photographer doing other types of photography. So um, just be, again, go back to their portfolio, understand who you're dealing with, make sure you like what you see. Um, and it does cost a little more for someone who's really skilled in that niche, I would say. Excellent. Ooh, here's one that, uh, that probably comes up for you a lot. Can you Photoshop my existing headshot to make myself look better? Right. <laughs> what do you do with that? Well, um, I, you know, I've helped a couple people with that very rarely. And, you know, I, I really just push them to, if they're local and I can get them in my studio, I'll just push them to get a better, newer headshot. <laughs> Um, but, you know, sometimes I take a look at photos for people. The thing to remember about retouching, though, and Photoshop in general is a headshot is not a type of photography that should be messed with very extensively in the retouching process. And the reason for that is that, A, it becomes not very representative of who you are, but also if it looks like it's been retouched or messed with, um, that can also be a very negative effect on your viewer in a professional or corporate or profile sort of setting out there online. So. The retouching that I do and what I recommend is it's minimal. It addresses some very basic things, but it really shouldn't look like it's been retouched. And so what scares me about someone asking if I can fix up a photo they might have is that the amount of work to do that, you know, I always tell people you can do anything you want in Photoshop if you have enough time and money, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you should. So that's really kind of the issue there. <laughs> Uh, let's see, how do we convert, this is a, a technical question, so I don't know, uh, how do we convert pixels to inches for Facebook? I can't find a good converter. Do you know anything about how we would do that? So, um, to my knowledge, th there's no direct correlation between what size you can print an image at and the pixels that, you, you know, go into the long or short edge. Um, you can, you know, as a general rule of thumb, you need higher resolution files to print at larger sizes. Um, so maybe I'm not fully understanding the question there, but there's no direct correlation or conversion of those things other than to say if you have a, you know, a web-sized or smaller type of image that maybe is, for example, 1,024 pixels on the long edge, um, that's going to work pretty well for website and smaller uses and even printing where it's not too large. So you know, four by six prints, business card prints, those are going to look pretty good. But the problem you run into is if you don't have enough uh, resolution or pixels in the file and you're getting into larger print formats, you'll start to see things less sharp and more pixelated in the print. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that helps a little. I don't, otherwise I'm, I'm not exactly sure what, what uh, they're after right there. <laughs> so that gives good basic guidance. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and then another great one from uh, from Nolan. Would you wear a logo shirt or uh, or a logo apparel in your headshot to kind of show your affiliation with your realty team or with your company? Sure. So um, that can make sense. It really um, it really starts with the question of what's your intended use for that photo and what context are you going to go put that online or use it amongst your peers? Who's your audience? And does if that all makes sense? As far as having a logo and being, you know, represented on a team, then sure. Um, I have some companies I've shot multiple headshots for where, yeah, they wore a uniform because that's what they decided to do as a team, and it looks great and it makes sense. Just be aware if you wear a logo and then you, you plan to use that outside of the context of that team, it might present a few, you know, uh, challenges or a little bit of confusion for your audience. Fantastic. Those are uh, supremely helpful uh, follow-ups to what we've been discussing today. Bringing it back to uh, giving you some more information that you see here on your screen, uh, for any equator-specific questions that came in, and there were a few of those, uh, we're going to make sure that we, uh, we address those offline and get those to you soon uh, by the end of the week. Uh, and we'll also, of course, as I said at the beginning, be emailing this presentation out to all attendees. Um, as you see, Equator also thanks you in addition to uh, the 15% off that locals uh, can benefit from for the uh, John Glover photography headshots. Equator is thank you for uh, thanking you for joining us on the webinar with a discount code of $100 off an annual Agent Elite subscription and 15% off as many premium placement zip codes as you want to add today for the next 12 months. So uh, just use these, uh, these codes that you see on your screen and apply them online in your cart on Equator. Uh, for questions specific to your account, like I said, please give a call to our Equator product specialist at the number you see on your screen and they will walk you through your account and answer any specific questions that you have. Thank you again for joining us today and thank you, John, for being with us and lending your knowledge to our agents. It was my pleasure. I'm happy to do it. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.